السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله على حسانه وشكر له على تفضله وامتنانه ولا إله إلا الله تعظيما لشأنه وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله داعي إلى رضوانه وعلى آله وأصحابه وإخوانه أما بعد إخواني في الله We are concluding our lecture series tonight with regards to the minor signs of the Day of Judgment. Tomorrow, inshallah, we shall begin with the major signs of the Day of Judgment. We are talking about sign number 57, where the, the Kaaba shall be destroyed. The Kaaba shall be destroyed, and this is from the signs of the Day of Judgment. We looked at it, the unfortunate historical event that happened on the first of Muharram, the year 1400 of the Hijri calendar, where Juhayman al utaybi in the year 1979, and his group, they attacked Al-Haram, the, the Kaaba, and they caused a lot of fitna, and a lot of people lost their lives. Another fitna that occurred in history is the fitna of a group known as the Qaramita. Al-Qaramita. If you are aware of there's a group from amongst the Muslims that are known as the Shi'as. They are Shi'as. These people, they claim that the Prophet ﷺ, the ruler after him, should not have been Abu Bakr. It should have been only from the Ahlul Bayt, from the family of Prophet ﷺ, from Ali ibn Abi Talib, and so on and so on. So when they reached their sixth Imam, Ja'far ibn Sadiq, rahimahullah, all the 12 Imams of the Shi'as are from the Sunnah. They're all from Ahlul Sunnah. They're not from the Shi'as. They don't accept them and they don't follow their path. So their sixth Imam, Ja'far al-Sadiq, he passes away. Then there's khilaf amongst the Shi'as. A group of them, they say the Imam after Ja'far al-Sadiq is Musa al-Kadhim, Ibn Ja'far al-Sadiq. And that is the majority of the Shi'as, they follow this man, Musa al-Kadhim, Ibn Ja'far al-Sadiq, as their next Imam. A group of them, they said, no, we shall follow Ismail Ibn Ja'far the son of Ja'far ibn Sadiq also. This group were known as the Ismailiya, the sect known as the Ismailis. And you know them in Kenya from the Aga Khan and so on and so forth. And also in Pakistan and many countries. So the Shias were divided into these two groups, the Ismailiya and the Ithna Ashariya. The Ismailiya, they got divided into two also. The Ismailis were one group, and this group we're talking about today, Al-Qaramita, that was formed by a man called Hamdan Al-Qirmit. These people, on the outward, they were Shias. But in the inside, they were Mushrikun, they were Kuffar. The scholars, they say, Akfar min al-Yahudi wa nasara even more disbelieving than the Christians and the Jews. So they formed this sect known as the Qaramita, and they started growing in strength. And they captured an area that is known historically as Bahrain. This area is the eastern province of Saudi Arabia. Bahrain is not the current island, also the eastern province, where there is the cities of Dammam and Qatif, all this was known as Bahrain at that time. As you know, Yemen was after Taif, Hijaz was Jidda, Taif and Medina, the borders were known. So Bahrain was this area. So they captured this area and they had very weird beliefs. From amongst the beliefs they had, they had a f complete hate for Hajj. They used to consider the ibad of Hajj as being the ibad of Jahiliya. That the Mushrikun, Abu Jahl used to do Hajj also. So they used to consider this ibadah as Jahiliya. And they used to attack the Hujjaj. Anytime the Hujjaj are going to the Kaaba or leaving Hajj, they attack them. They kill their men, they rape their women, and they take all the property. Mujrimun. They did a lot of ijram, Khanifillah. At this time, the Islamic, the Muslims were divided all over the world. North Africa was taken from us. The Ismailis, the Dawla al Fatimiyah, were ruling the whole of North Africa, Taqriban. Muslims were divided. The Khilafa, the Khilafa al Abbasiyah, he was busy fighting with the Zanj, a group of East Africans, most likely from the part of the world we were in. Bantus, they were causing a lot of problems in the Khilafa and they were revolting. Africans were revolting in the Khilafah and they caused a lot of fitna. So the Khilafah was very weak. This group, Al-Qaramita, continued spreading in strength and they were supported by their brothers in Egypt, the Fatimids. Then in the year 317 of the Hijri calendar, after many years of attacking Hujjaj, 
causing massacres amongst the Hujjaj, they decided to do something that has never, ever, ever been done in history. On the 8th of Dhul Hijjah, the year 317 of the Hijri calendar, the day the Hujjaj, Yawm Tarwiyah, this is the day the Muslims are going to Mina. For day 9 is the day of Arafah. So day 8, the Muslims are supposed to go to, to Mina. Day 9, they spend in, in Arafah. They attacked the Hujjaj Ghani Fillah and they massacred 30,000 of the Hujjaj in Mecca, in the most sacred of places. They killed men, women, and children. Then they went to the Kaaba and they found Muslims making tawaf. They removed their swords and started killing Muslims one by one. Even if a Muslim was holding the sitar, the kiswa of the Kaaba, hanging for his dear life, pleading to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they were massacring them. Then the leader Abu Tahir al Qarmiti, Allah, alayhi, he decides ah, there are too many bodies here, throw them in the well of Zamzam. I want to make sure there's a blockage on the well of Zamzam, there shall be no Zamzam. Let it block with the bodies of these people. So he started throwing the corpses of the Muslims into the well of Zamzam. And he removed the Qubba, the, the dome that was over the well of Zamzam. Then he went and he removed the doors of the Kaaba, La'anatullah alayhi. And he started removing the kiswa, the clothing that's covered the Kaaba. He removes it and he gives to his companions. He divides amongst his companions. Ijram in the year 317 of the Hijri calendar. After that, he tells one of his companions, Go and remove the Hajar al-Aswad. Go and remove this black stone that the Muslims keep kissing. This is the only ibadah that one Muslim at a time can do in the entire world. If you asked what is the only ibadah that only one Muslim in the entire world can do at one time, it is kissing the Hajar al-Aswad. So they went and they removed the Hajar al-Aswad. Then they started looking up. Why were they looking up? They are saying to the Muslims, mocking them, Aina Tayrun al Babil. Where are those birds that were thrown to the people who came to destroy the Kaaba? Allah subhanahu wa mentions in Surah Al Surah Al Fil. Alam Tara Kaifa Fala Rabbuka bi Ashab al Fil. Alam Yaja al Kaidahum fi Tadlil. So it's like, where are those birds? Where are those stones? Let those stones come upon us. And they continue massacring the Muslims. When the Amir of Mecca, who had not yet been killed, saw that, he came to him and pleaded to him, I give you all my wealth, just do not take the Hajar Asad from there. He refused. They started fighting with the Amir of Mecca. The Amir of Mecca lost his life, his children, his brothers, most of his family lost their lives. And the Hajar Asad Khanifillah was taken from Mecca for 22 years until the year 339 of the Hijri calendar. The Muslims, they paid a lot of money. They gave these guys a lot of money. Return back the Hajar al-Aswad to Mecca. 22 years, there was no Hajar al-Aswad in Mecca. The year 317 to the year 339 of the Hijri calendar. If you look even an interesting thing, if you look at the books of fiqh, the scholars, scholars what they wrote this time, they used to write from amongst the sunnah when you do tawaf and to qabbila al-Hajar al-Aswad in Kan, in, in Amkan. If it is possible for you in Amkana and to qabbila al-Hajar al-Aswad. If it is possible for you, you should kiss the Hajar al-Aswad in Amkan. But the books in this period, they, didn't, they changed these words in Amkan to in Kana. You should kiss the Hajar al-Aswad if it is there. Subhanallah. What do, what do you mean if it is there? It was taken by this Shia sect. They were not even Shias. They were worse than the Shia, al Batiniya, Kufriya. They were disbelieving sect of the Karamita. In the year 339, the Fatimids, they forced them to return the Hajar Aswad, and it was returned on the day of Eid al-Adha, the year 339 of the Hijr calendar. So these are two evil fitness that occurred. In the year 317 of the Hijr calendar, the Karamita, they attacked the Baytullah Azza wa Jal. Also in our times, in the year 1400 of the Hijr calendar, Juhayman al-Utaybi and some people who had some knowledge of the religion of Islam. They read the books regarding the signs of the Day of Judgment and they became crazy. They lost their minds and they attacked Muslims and they caused a great fitna in Mecca in the year 1400. A greater fitna is waiting for us and that is the complete destruction of the Kaaba, the complete destruction of Baytullah al-Haram. The Prophet ﷺ says, 
يبايع الرجل ما بين الركن والمقام a man shall be given the pledge of allegiance between the ruqn al-yamani and the maqam Ibrahim. And no one will make halal to cause fitna and massacres in Mecca except the Muslims. When the Muslims, they do not consider the sacredness of Mecca, do not ask about the destructions of the Arabs. Then the Ethiopians will come. Then the Ethiopians will come. As you all know, Ethiopia is in South Africa. True or false? <laughs> People are sleeping, they're awake. We are in, next to Ethiopia, we're here. We're in East Africa. So these Ethiopians, They shall destroy the Kaaba and the house of Allah in Mecca. It shall never be rebuilt after the Ethiopians destroy the house of Allah in Mecca. It shall never be be rebuilt. And they are the ones who shall remove the treasure from the Kaaba. So, Allah, from amongst the signs of the Day of Judgment is that the Kaaba shall be destroyed when we Muslims, we start fighting each other therein. We do not consider how sacred of a place it is. This is a place where all life is protected. Animal life is protected. Plant life is protected. What about human lives? So the Kaaba shall be made halal or by it shall, Muslims shall do crimes within it. When they do that, the Ethiopians will come with a great army led by a man who has thin legs. The Prophet ﷺ says, A man with very thin legs from Habasha, from Ethiopia, will come and destroy the Kaaba. He shall take all the ornaments that are beautifying the Kaaba. And he will remove the cloth covering the Kaaba. The Prophet ﷺ says, Wallahi, it is as if I am looking at him. He has a bald head. قال عليه الصلاة والسلام يخرب الكعبة ذو سواقين ذو سواقتين من الحبشة. The Kaaba will be destroyed by a man who has very thin legs until he's known by his attribute, not by his name. ذو سواقتين. He has very thin legs and he comes from Ethiopia. He comes from the lands of Abyssinia, the lands of Habasha. So, يقول في الله from amongst the signs of the Day of Judgment is that. The house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shall be destroyed. And this is the final minor sign of the days of judgment that we are taking tonight, Ikhwanifillah. Ikhwanifillah, in the next lecture we shall look at the major signs of the day of judgment. When we began our lecture series, we said that no one knows when the day of Qiyamah is. We do not know when the day of judgment is. Although it is a firm part of our belief as Muslims, that we believe that there's a day of judgment, a day that is equivalent to 50,000 years. We shall be held to account, all of us, regarding what we did in this dunya, which is our place of growing, and the day of judgment and the hereafter is where we shall harvest based on our deeds, be it our good deeds or our bad deeds. So when is this day of judgment? We do not know. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, out of his mercy, he has given us signs of the day of judgment, signs that show that the day of judgment is very close. And we mentioned that these two signs, the signs are divided into two, minor signs and major signs. Minor signs are things that are of normal occurrence. They're not something abnormal per se. They're not something that has a very large shock factor. And these minor signs, some of them have already appeared, ended. Some of them are present in our times, like the Arabs competing in building tall buildings. Some are not yet to appear. They shall come later, like this man from Ethiopia destroying the Kaaba. This is a minor sign that will come later. Destruction of a house, it's not something major. It's, not something, it's major, but it's not something that is abnormal. Then there's the major signs of the Day of Judgment. Things that do not... Logic cannot accept. Masih al-Dajjal, a person who has one eye, he comes and he causes the earth to shake. He causes the plants to grow. He causes people to look. He brings your parents to life. In quotes, we shall look what that means. You see people coming from out of the ground. They are juju, my juj. 
One day you wake up, the sun has risen from the west. Things that are out of this world, those are the major signs of the day of judgment that we shall look at at the forthcoming lecture. Quick revision, the minor signs we have taken so far. Number one, the coming of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Number two, the splitting of the moon. Number three, the death of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Number four, the conquest of Beit al-Maqdis, Jerusalem. Number five, a plague of Amwas that killed many of the Sahaba. Number six, there shall be so much wealth amongst the Muslims that they shall not find anyone to give sadaqah to. You can review the lectures on Ain TV and know when that happened. Number seven, there shall be a lot of fitna in this ummah, a lot of trials, a lot of tribulations in this ummah. And you mentioned amongst the things we mentioned regarding the fitna is most of the fitna comes from the east, from the lands of, from which country? From? From Iraq. Type. Also we mentioned the killing of Uthman ibn Affan anhu. He was assassinated. That's one of the fitna the Prophet ﷺ mentioned. We mentioned the battle of the camel that happened amongst the Sahaba and some Sahabas lost their lives and one of the mothers of believers was present in that battle. We mentioned the battle of Sifin between Ali ibn Abi Talib and Muawiyah ibn Abi Sufyan. We mentioned an extremist group, a group, the Prophet ﷺ, he says, if I was present, I will fight them, the Khawarij. This extremist group, group will be present with us until the day of judgment when they shall join the Masih al-Dajjal. So as Muslims, we should always take the moderate path and not the path of extremism. Then we mentioned also that Medina was attacked and this was one of the signs of the day of judgment. A fitna will occur in Medina and the battle of Harra occurred. Also we mentioned the issue of the claim of the Quran being a creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then we went to sign number eight. We mentioned there shall be a lot of people who shall claim to be prophets. And the very first one we took was Musaylam al-Kadhab. And the last one we took from India, Mirza Ahmed Ghulam al-Ahmadiyya. Number nine, there shall be so much security that a woman will travel from Iraq to Mecca by herself and do tawaf on the Kaaba, around the Kaaba. Number ten, there shall be a great fire in the lands of Hijaz. It shall be seen as far as Busra in Syria. And this happened in the year 654 of the Hijri calendar. A great fire in Medina occurred. It was seen as far as the lands of Busra and the people were amazed Look at how the Prophet ﷺ told us of things that are going to happen and happened later on. All these things are miracles of Prophet ﷺ. He tells us of things that, have hap, hap, that are going to happen after him and we saw them happening exactly as he said. 100%, not 99%, 100% as Prophet ﷺ, he prophesied. Sign number 12, we shall be fighting the people of Turkish origin and more particularly the Mongolians. And we mentioned the worst three Mongolians with regards to history, Genghis Khan, Hulagu Khan, and Timur Lank. Please review in the lecture, inshallah. Sign number 12 from the signs of the Day of Judgment, we said there shall be a lost, loss of trust. Muslims are no longer be trustworthy people. It will be very rare to find someone you can give your money to and you trust it to them. And this is something clearly we're seeing in, a, in our times. Number 13, Knowledge shall be taken away from the Muslims and Muslims will be very ignorant with uh, regards to the affairs of the deen. And this is the death of scholars. Sign number 14, there shall be a lot of police officers and they shall be carrying whips and they shall be whipping people. Number 15, there shall be a lot of zina. There shall be a lot of adultery and fornication. Number 16, there shall be a lot of riba. And this is clear in our times. Number 16, there shall be a lot of riba. Number 17, music will be everywhere. People will be listening to music. It will enter every single house, music instruments. Number 18, people shall be drinking alcohol and calling it to the different name. For example, they call it spirits, drinks of the, of the soul. This is from amongst the signs of the day of judgment. Number 19, people shall be competing with mosques. Who is going to build the most beautiful mosque? Zakhrafatul Masajid. 
we shall be competing in building mosques. And this is clear, we've seen it. Number 20, Muslims shall be competing in building the tallest building. Who is going to build the tallest building? We've seen in Dubai, Burj Al, Burj Al, Burj Al Khalifa. We've seen in Jeddah, the Jeddah Tower. We've seen in Kuwait, Muslims are the ones competing. Even in Malaysia, Petronas and other towers, Muslims are the ones competing in the building of the tallest of the tallest buildings. Number 21, a woman will give birth to her master. A, the children shall be very disobedient to their parents and they shall be treating their parents as slaves, especially their mothers. Number 22, there shall be a lot of killing. And in history, we do not know of a time where there was a lot of killing, like in the last century, for example, where it happened World War I, World War II. Over 100 million people lost their lives. Colonialism was also in that century. Many people lost their lives in colonialism. We know what happened in, in, in Cambodia, what happened in Rwanda, what happened in, in Bosnia, Herzeg, in Srebrenica. So many massacres happened in the last century, a lot of bloodshed. That's from amongst the signs of the Day of Judgment. Number 23, time will move very fast. It was just Friday last week. It's already Friday tomorrow. True or false? We are seeing clearly. It was just 2020 last year. <laughs> We're already in 2022. We'll be in 2030 very soon. Time is moving very fast. Sign number 24, marketplace will be one market. The world shall be one market. Someone sells in Japan, there's something, the price is in, is in New York. The same price is in London. Look at the price of gold. Look at the price of oil. Look at the price of these commodities. It's the same price. The world has become one market and clear as how the Prophet ﷺ mentioned. 25, there shall be appearance of shirk in this ummah. Some of the Muslims are Muslims in name, but they're polytheists in nature. They're making dua to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They say, Ya Hussein, Ya Abd al-Qadr al-Jilani, Ya Ahmed al-Badawi. They make dua to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is the worst form of shirk, making dua to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Son number 26, Dhuhur al-Fuhsh, wa qati'atu al-Rahim, wa su'u al-Jiwar. There shall be a lot of immorality in our society. People shall be breaking family relations, and people will be bad neighbors. And I want to emphasize on this point. This thing has become widespread. People are breaking family relations for the most worthless of issues. A lady comes with a man home. She's refused. Second man, third man, fourth man. You keep refusing every single man that your daughter brings at home for marriage and she's asking for halal. Eventually what happens, she gets fed up. She goes to the qadi, she gets married after the qadi confirms that you are not a reasonable person. What do most of the people do these days? They say that to the child, I've, gone to, I've seen these cases so many times. They say to the child, you are cursed. You are no longer my child. And they break a relation because of marriage. Because a child chose a particular course to study in university. He didn't want to study this. He wanted to study. He didn't want to study medicine. He chose finance, for example. Why are we looking for such flimsy reasons to break family relations? You as the parent will be asked by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, as the imams, as the khatibs, every day we stand on the member and we remind the people to be good to their parents. But also we need to remind the parents, be good to your children. Do not break family relations with a flimsy reason like education, like a choice of education, the choice of a husband. Please look at this issue. Sign number 27, the Muslims will be dyeing their beard Ah, which color? Color black. Number 28. Muslims shall become, uh, many of them shall become very stingy. They shall become stingy. They are not able to give their money. It's myself, 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 my family. They don't care. Ah, there's a brother who wants to do. There's a fundraising. That's not my problem. Especially now, these days, why well, it's so different in Nairobi? If you go out to Nairobi, people, they welcome you. They slaughter for you a goat. I've never seen a goat be insulted in Nairobi for a guest in a very long time. It's very strange. What has happened to that generosity? Have we lost our generosity the time we left Mandera, we left Garissa, we left Mombasa, we left Lamu? When we came to Nairobi, we forgot the, na- the, the guest. A guest comes, ah, Ajipange, let him organize himself. I'm busy, I have my own things to do. Even welcoming guests has become, or oh, let us meet a Java. You take a guest to Java. Hi, yeah? Mashallah. Number 30, they shall be 
Number 29, there shall be a lot of business until the woman, she participates with the husband in business. And that's very clear, especially from our own tribe, our own community. Number 30, there shall be a lot of earthquakes, a lot of tremors. Number 31, dhuhur al-khasf wal-masq wal-qadf. The earth shall collapse. People shall be turned into monkeys and pigs, and stones shall be thrown from them from the heavens. Number 32, from the signs of the day of judgment, the death of righteous people. Many of the righteous people, they will go. And the people will be left at the worst of people. They shall be doing sins openly without any fear, without caring for account. Number 33, the people who are the most foolish in society, the most despicable in society, are going to be raised in the position of, of leadership. And we see this every five years in our country. Where a person who is not even qualified to look after your goats, you're making him look after a county, you're making him look after a constituency. MashaAllah. He's not even qualified to look after your goats. And you want him to look after the widows and the orphans and the poor people. And you expect any results. MashaAllah. Number 34, the Muslims will only say salamu alaikum to the ones they know. And this is something that's, I don't know, why I'm so afraid to say wa alaykum salam, wa alaykum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. When you're giving a salam, you should reply it in the same way in terms of the words, in terms of the sound. How can I as the Sheikh be louder than all of you combined? I come, I say as salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I cannot barely hear wa alaykum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And it is wajib upon you to say and respond. It is sunnah for me to greet you. But once I greet you, it becomes obligatory upon you to answer it. So always respond to the greeting and greet every Muslim. They are your brothers. If you want to be loved, to love your fellow Muslims, Afshu salama bainakum. Give as salamu alaikum to whoever you know and you do know whoever you do not know. Let us teach ourselves that. Number 35, people will be seeking knowledge from worthless people, from asagir from people who are not knowledgeable. People are taking ilm from sources they should not take. And from amongst the sources people are taking knowledge these days is Google. Google is not qualified. Who did Google study under? Huh? Who did Google study under? Who Sheikh? Google did not study under any Sheikh. Everything in Google is mixed. You can find a website for Shias, you can find for Sufis, for Khawarij, you can find for heretics, for Zindiq. You can find everything. Google is not qualified to be a Sheikh. Also, these rumors, people are spreading messages with WhatsApp and such things, and you're taking your knowledge from such messages. And there are people here, they've studied knowledge. Why can't you come and ask the sheikhs who have studied knowledge? And they're known for their uprightness and their straightforwardness. They do not fear except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They say the truth, and they stick to that truth. And they're wise in their words and their actions. Number 36, women shall be dressed, yet they're naked. Have we seen it in our times? They are dressed, yet they are naked. Tight clothes, transparent clothes, or short clothes. Have we seen it? Number 37. The dream of the believer will be true dream. And this is also something that's becoming a lot spread these days. Many times we see dreams, and those dreams, subhanAllah, it's very clear, and it's very true. And really surprises you. But we as Muslims cannot base our lives on dreams. We are not Nabiullah Ibrahim. Oh, oh my son, I've seen in a dream that I am to slaughter you. If you see in a dream that you're supposed to slaughter your child, you'll go say, ah, I'm like Nabi Ibrahim. No. Yes, they are true dreams. But do not take your religion from those dreams. Those dreams are just extra support. Extra support to give you Iman. To give you tranquility. To give your soul a rest. Number 38, a lot of writing. There shall be a lot of publications. And this is very clear in our time where there's a lot of publishing companies. There's the internet. Every article is available on the internet. These days even you don't need writers to write. Computers and robots and artificial intelligence, they write articles and there's a lot of spread of writing. Number 39, people will come to a mosque and use it as a pathway. And you see clearly in our own mosque, Masjid Salam. Someone can come to Masjid Salam and go straight. I'm going to the high school. I'm going to the TV station. I'm going to the library. I'm going to the Zakah office. I'm going to Madrasa. They go straight. 
What happened to praying two rak'at at al masjid? What happened to giving the greeting to the mosque? To pray two rak'at, then you go upstairs. This is one of the signs of the day of judgment. Number 40, the moon will become bigger than normal. The day two will look like day three or day four. The moon is bigger than normal. Sign number 41, a lot of lying and people not confirming news. And this is so widespread in our time, subhanAllah. You read something in the newspaper, it's 100% correct. Huh? Ikhwani fillah. You've read something in the newspaper. Is the newspaper correct? You've heard something negative about your brother in the newspaper. You believe it? You've heard people talking around rumors in cafeterias. You follow it. And you start talking about your fellow Muslims. And you start talking about a mosque. Or you start talking about the women. And you start saying, such and such a sister has done such a crime. You start talking. That's sign number 41. 42, a lot of false witness. A lot of people will be giving false witness. Number 43, there shall be so many women and very few men. Number 44, sudden death. Someone looks normal, he's just left here. You're told, Sat Fajr, we're praying for him, Janazah. Happens, it doesn't happen. It is a lot in our times. True or false? 45, people will, they shall not be co communities anymore. People will be individualistic in society. Everyone will be like myself, myself, myself. They don't care about their fellow brothers. 46, the lands of the Arabs will become fertile and green as it once was. As it once was. And we confirmed this from, from what the scientists are saying. 47, there shall be a lot of rain and that rain does not have any baraka. No plants will grow. Number 48, the Euphrates River the Euphrates River will reveal a mountain of gold. This mountain of gold, 100 Muslims will fight over it. 99 will die. So out of 900, 99 will die. Maybe a million Muslims will fight over that gold. Everyone says that gold is mine. I'm the one who will get it. 99% of them will lose their lives. The Euphrates River. So you're told by Prophet salam, when the Euphrates River brings out that gold, stay away. Number 49, the animals... The, the inanimate objects will talk to the, to the man. Even your thigh will speak to you. Your animals will speak to you. Number 50, people will be wishing for death because of the trials they're going to. Number 51, the Europeans will be the majority of the people in the world and they shall fight the Muslims. Number 52, the Muslims shall conquer the city of Nam. Constantine? Constantinople, which is currently known as which city? Istanbul, Mumtaz. Number 53, a person from the tribe of Qahtan will come and rule the Muslims upon the correct path. Number 54, the Muslims shall fight the Jews. And this will happen at the time of the Masih al-Dajjal. Number 55, the city of Medina shall be left empty. There shall be no one left in the city of Medina. It shall be left completely empty. Number 56, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is amongst the very last signs, if not one of the last ones. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send a good wind, a pleasant wind that will take the souls of every Muslim, every believer. And the only people who will be left in the world are the most evil people. There shall be no one on earth to say, La ilaha illallah. All the Muslims will die and only the evil people will remain when this wind is sent to remove the souls of every single Muslim. Even if you're hidden inside the mountains, wherever you're hidden, that wind will reach you. Even if you're closed in, in a windproof, whatever, that wind will reach you. And number 57, we mentioned tonight, is that the Baytul Haram, the Kaaba, shall be destroyed from a man, by a man from Habasha. وَآخِرُ الدَّعْوَانَ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ In the next lecture, tomorrow after Maghrib, we shall look at the major signs of the Day of Judgment. وَالسَّلَامُ عَلَيْكُمْ وَرَحْمَةُ اللَّهِ وَبَرَكَاتُهُ